a Daffy and anyone else who might find this video. Uh, yeah, I, th I thought it was easy just to show um, Chantel to answer your questions. Um, so yeah, I mean, definitely in terms of the, the interface and how it all feels, it's definitely less weird than uh, ZBrush, which is really nice. It's, it's very straightforward. Um, in terms of compatibility with Maya and stuff, to be honest, the, part of the appeal for me f with Nomad is that I can do it all here. So you know, if I were to, I mean, you can see here that this is now live inside Nomad and this sort of render quality I've got, it's all in the app. So, you know, I've got access to you know, all, all my lights. So I can um, you know, go back to just my environment light or I can turn them all back on again. You can see I've got uh, subsurface properties. Um, I've got um, post-processing. So in its default sort of um, sculpting mode, I'll be looking at it like this because it's nice and fast. But I can go to like full post-process and I can turn on full um, PBR shading and you get all this sort of uh, lovely, it's amazing. So that's why I like it. Um, but in terms of getting it out and into other apps, to be honest, I've not done a lot of that uh, because as I said, I like that I can just do it all in, in here. Uh, but in theory, some of it is there, not, not all of it. So what, so what you can do is you can uh, bake out maps. So I'm just gonna try and do a little live demo of that. So I'm gonna turn off everything apart from um, the main uh, sort of head, which is that. I'm gonna go back to just uh, a matcap mode for now and turn off the post-processing. Okay, so we're back to just vanilla. So this this head, it's obviously got a lot of detail. If I go to show the wireframe and I've got a color painted into it, which I can show by going to unlit. So that's my sort of like color properties. If I painted like, you know, specular kind of shininess on the lips and stuff, that that's all kind of built in there as well. Um, but if I want to bake this out, um, obviously I wouldn't want to be animating and rendering with a mesh this dense. Uh, I want something more low res. Uh, so strictly speaking, you'd probably want to take this mesh out into Maya, retopologize it, bring it back and do a, um, a transfer. Um, or even do that inside Maya if you wanted. Um, what you can do in Nomad is surprising considering it's, a, it's an app. So what I can do is I can um, make a duplicate of this, this mesh. I'm just going to look at this one for now. I'm going to name this one uh, low res and I'm going to um, decimate it. So uh, Nomad has a pretty good built-in uh, triangle-based uh, decimation. So if I go to uh, MISC and up here to decimation, uh, I'm going to tell it to not preserve painting and I'm just going to hit decimate. And you can see that um, this, the triangle count is coming down, uh, may not show up in the video compression, but this is now down to um, something a bit more reasonable that you might want to sort of animate with, if you can see, see that. Um, on this recording. And now I could tell it to either uh, bake from this, but what you can also do is it's got its own, um, the developer, uh, Stefan, um, ported the uh, fairly well-known uh, quad remesher made by uh, Wenzel Jacob and his crew of people called uh, called Instant Meshes. So I can just run that here. So I can sort of, you know, set a, a, target, a target count. So let me say like uh, 14,000 polygons and go remesh and it does not a bad job, you know, it's not brilliant, but for the purpose of this test, it's all right. To bake maps, you'd need UVs. It's got a built-in UV. -er. Again, it's not brilliant, but it's good enough for the job. So does that think? So now we've got UVs in the back there. And now I can tell it to bake uh, all the properties from the higher res one into this one. So I'm gonna basically hide everything apart from um, the, the. so I'm gonna bake from this high res one, which I'll, I'll just name high res so it's clear what I'm doing. High res, so I just solo, so that's my high res. That's my low res. So they have to be both on, and I'm gonna choose my low res, and I'm gonna go and so bake. And so you can see here, I can bake normals, color, roughness, metal, emissive, opacity, and a mask if you wanted. Uh, so I'm just gonna go from my res, and it's on. So if I now look at just the low res, so turn the one off, you can see that um, it will also quite nicely preview the maps for you uh, on the mesh. So if I go across to the material tab here, uh, make sure I've got the right thing chosen. Yep, and go to lit mode and turn up some of the lights, turn the lights back on again, um, and turn off the wireframe. You can see that um, it's transferred the color into textures and it's even transferred the normal maps, which I can preview by going to the material and I can play with the um, with these text properties. So if I slide down the normals, you can see that's that's what the mesh really looks like. And this is what it looks like with the normal map in place. So it's not bad. 
Um, same with the roughness and the mentalness. Um, so that's the, so that's got the color map there, which I can turn off by turning off uh, that. That should be turning off. Ah, because uh, that should be turning it off. Why is it not turning it off? Uh, viewing only that one. Uh, it's because I'm doing inspects. Yeah. So if I turn the um, textures back on again, you can see it's baked up my textures. So and what what this inspect thing is is in the back. So if I move him off to the side there, um, this is lets me preview the various maps. So that's my UVs. That's my color map. I'll turn off the wireframe so you can see it's baked up my color, roughness, normals, emissive opacity. Um, a big uh, emission here, which I was surprised it doesn't have, is it, it doesn't bake height maps or, or displacement maps. Um, so for that, you'd, you'd want to sort of bake out inside either Maya or inside uh, ZBrush. Uh, what else did you ask? Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, again, to get back to the first point, I like just being able to render everything in here in one without having to you know, take things in and out. The other thing that it would be useful for in terms of production work would be um, for um, sculpting blend shapes. So if we go back to um, just the regular mode again, the sort of the fast sculpting mode, um, from here, turn that off, I can go into layers, I can go add a layer, name it, uh, where's my naming? Do, 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 do. Should be that. Uh, that. So I call this one, say, you know, smile, and I can just sculpt smile. So I'm going to move tool and I'm going to push it like that. That's one amazing smile. Um, turn that down so I can, I can preview it there. Uh, I'll turn it off and layer, call this one uh, blink. I can go and just like sculpt it really quickly. So you can see I'm doing this really carefully. <laughs> Dear me. Got to sculpt fast, fast, fast. There we are. So this is basically what what I did for that um, for that animation test I did, um, just like really sort of quick um, quick sculpting. Add layer, next one call it uh, what do you call it? Frown, I guess. And and so it goes. So you just you know make that be down that way. Make him go frowny face. Um, so and you can even like sort of you know, test them all together here if you're so inclined. Uh, I can go expand so I can see all my blend shapes at once. Um, and you can, uh, so to get all these, all these blend shapes out of uh, Nomad, um, if you export a, um, a GLB, so like a, a, like a sort of common web, web format player, um, that will export all the layers here, um, which imports into Blender. Uh, I don't know about my support, Houdini support is really bad, um, but it is possible to get them all out and then you can use them as, as, as sliders, which is pretty good. Um, other big things in terms of, I guess, you know, pro 3D usage um, is there, he has apparently done, done a deal with the guy who wrote uh, Zed Remesher, and so that'll be inside the app version soon. Um, he's gonna get polygroups going very soon, and he is planning a desktop build um, before the end of the year, which will be massive. Um, so yeah, that's kind of the set of Nomad. Um, I think it's worth playing with, even if it doesn't kind of do what you want, just being able to just like concept 3D sculpting on the couch, on your phone, anywhere in the world is just incredible. So um, yeah, I'm a big, big fan. Hope that answers your questions.